Yes. Okay. And can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay. Here we go. Let's let's try this. Okay, as Larry said, my name's Tony Goodrich, and uh, I've been over here a few years now. I moved to the U.S. a little over a decade ago. I used to drive for Southern Rail and used to be British Railways before that, and uh, got into card making kits a few years ago. And we have quite a few different ways of doing card kits in England, and a lot of them can be used over here. So I'm going to go through what I've been doing and give some tips on how to make these. So there's two versions you can do when it comes to card kits. And you can either use hey, ready to assemble kits or you can Hello. download and print kits. Use yourself. Um, I've got some examples on the table here, and I'm going to go through some pictures for those on Zoom. So we'll start off with some basic tools that you're going to need. Um, a steel ruler is invaluable, uh, certainly for making some of the fine straight cuts. Uh, you would need a craft knife. A nice sharp knife is uh, ideal, and they will blunt very quickly, so have some spare blades. A utility knife. Uh, is very good for some of the thicker cuts through the thicker card and it will save your craft knife, craft knife from being blunt. Uh, you'd also need a glue stick. Uh, I use this product called Yuhu and it's a fantastic product. It's German made and I've found them to be, it has a better bond than the stuff that you can buy here in the US. You can buy this on Amazon and they're fairly reasonably priced. You can use the local glue sticks. I have used those in the past, but I found this does stick far better and holds up better. The two models on the table I have, the first one I used a regular glue stick and I found that the glue over time starts separating. And I haven't had that issue with the newer model that I used this on. So this is great stuff to get. Um, a spray adhesive. It's very good also for the large pieces that you mount onto card. Spray that on the piece and then it far easier than just doing a glue stick. Um, you'd also need a matte spray, uh, clear acrylic, matte coat. I got this from Hobby Lobby. And there are two ways you can do it. You can either spray light coats over the model once it's complete. But again, I found that tends to undo the glue and it's recommended to spray the sheets before you mount them to card as soon as you print them off and it, and it kind of helps protect the finish and you only really need to do that to the top layers that I don't need to and I do also recommend a cutting mat it will save your tape so get a nice big cutting mat that you can cut onto the paper that I use uh, just a standard copy of paper brightest white paper you can get is generally good. There are some people that use the full size letter size sticky labels that you can get and you can print your cover layers onto the sticky labels. That will save having the glue. I haven't done that personally but the next project I'm going to use that to see how that goes but standard copy of paper is good. Uh, there is a little tip I'll have to go into further on regarding American-based paper as opposed to European papers. Uh, it's mainly down to the size difference. There are different types of cardstock that you would need to get. So the standard cardstock is considered a light card. I use that for the lighter pieces. And again, when I go into the kits, there are three kinds that you need a light card, a medium card, and a heavyweight card. So this is what I use. Again, it's available at most stores. Uh, Walmart carries this, and it's just a 110 pound card stock. Uh, you use that for where the instructions say light card. 
Now, one of the websites I use is Scale Scenes, and I'm going to go into the websites in a moment. But they have the recommended card sizes for what you're going to need. So, as I said before, you need light, medium, and heavy card, and it gives the dimensions on here of what it needs to read. So, medium card is about a millimeter thick, and heavy card around two millimeter thick. And then, depending on your scale, either N scale or double O scale. And double O scale in England is actually HO scale. It's just slightly different, but it will work for HO. And there are a way that you can take a double O scale model, a printable model, and then you can reprint that to be accurate for HO for those who want to keep it dead accurate to the scale size. And I'll talk about that. So the three websites I'm going to go into, Scale Scenes is the biggest, and I use them a lot. And all of my models that I've done the download print models have been Scale Scenes. They're a fantastic company, they've got a huge range, and I'd highly recommend those. Uh, 3DK is another company, they have some nice models on there. I haven't used any of those yet, but they do have some nice looking models, and Kingsway Models is another one. All three of these websites are based in the UK, and any models you purchase will be purchased in British pounds. But because it's a download, instant download, you'll get the kit in your email to download the kit. So I'll take you to the website so you can see the website. So this is the Scale Scenes website. So they do have some very excellent models that you can purchase and download. The great thing with Scale Scenes is they do have a free download. So you can scroll down the page and there are three models that you can do that. I'll switch to that and you should see what I have on the screen. Okay. Let's try that again. Alrighty. Okay, first website is Scale Scenes. Um, this is what the website looks like. They have quite a few different models on here. You can cruise through. Uh, they do have free download section. So there are three models that you can download. So you can give it a try. It's the low relief warehouse is one of the models and I built that, I have that on the table here. And they're pretty customizable. You can change the labels on them, different names. There are a mixture of different ones. You can change the door type, whether you want a clean cut door or a rusty door. They're customizable for that. And there's a lot on there. And they're mostly going to be double O, British layout, but they can be used on the American layout there very similar in size and you can actually, if you want them exactly accurate, you can print them to an accurate scale and I will go through how to do that. Uh, the other site was Kingsway Models. They are a hybrid site, so they will have a few download kits, but most of them will ship the kits too. So these are ready to go. The only thing you have to do is use a knife to cut out around the lines that it's just to cut them out at to build them together. So these are fixed at double O scale, which is 1 in 76, but they're very close to the scale of HO, so they will fit one well. I haven't used any of these, <clears throat> any of these kits myself, mainly because I've been doing download kits and the the actual ready-to-go kits I use is a different brand called Metcalf, which I'll talk about in a moment. And the other site you can see is 3DK. <coughs> These guys also have a number of models that you can download and print. Reasonably priced. And 
at the very bottom of the screen. We've got some HO kits that are ready to just download as they are and build those. And down the bottom here is a currency converter so that you can work out in pounds what it will be in US dollars. You just fill the fields out. It'll do the conversion for you. So for instance, three pounds fifty for one of the models something to start out at, it's just four dollars sixty four. So they're fairly reasonable on what they are. So what do you get when you get one of the scale scenes kits, they're the ones that I use mostly. Well, you'll get two PDF files. So the first PDF, you will get an instruction set. So you can either read them from the computer as you build or print off the instructions. I tend to print them off because they're easy to refer to and you can go through the several sheets and it's step-by-step -step instructions on how to put the model together. I recommend reading through the instructions several times before you start reading them. There are a few steps that you, you get to a certain point and then you realize, oh, I should have done this before and it wasn't too clear in the instructions. So go through them several times and just take your time putting it together. Uh, one of the things I found was, for instance, the model of the engine shed that I have here. The basic model comes half the size is what you build. And in order to build it longer, you can build it any length you wish by just printing off more copies of each model. But when you put it together, you don't put an end piece on it because you're just building it longer. Instead, you put a middle buttress on instead of an end buttress. And it doesn't just explain that in the instructions too well. I found that once I tried to put the two pieces together, it's like, oh, I've got two ends here. I need a middle buttress instead. So I took the ends off and put a middle buttress on. And then that extended it. Once I realized that, it went after that pretty well. And it's things like that you'll notice as you build it together. And you can build this as long as you like it to be. Uh, that's the great thing with it, you just print more pages off. You also get the model itself, which again, you just download and print the images and you get several pages to print. And you can go through the PDF file and select which ones you wanna print. But the idea is that you get base layers So you, you print off your base layers for however many you need. You mount those to your cardstock, and then you get cover layers. And then you wrap the cover layers around your base layers. And there are different variations. So you've got different door colors. So you can select what door colors you would like. You've got different wall styles. So there are some with graffiti on them if you want to add a bit of graffiti to it. And you can customize which ones you want to use. There are also different styles of wall. So if you wanted to just do a plain wall with no windows, you could print off the version that has no windows. And then when it comes to windows, you could print off the windows too. Here's the various base layers and cover layers that you can choose. And then when it comes to the windows, you can use transparency build. Again, this is available on Amazon. Um, it's fairly reasonably priced. And then you just put a piece of transparency in your printer and you print off the window on, that comes in the file. And then you cut these out, but then you get some nice plastic windows that I have in the model there. So what we have here is the engine shed as I was constructing it before I put the roof on. Uh, it goes together fairly well. It can be a little fiddly. It does take a little bit of time, particularly some of the detail work. There's a section right above the windows, which is very finicky. Um, basically you have the base layers here. There's lots of cuts to be made. 
which is why you need a nice sharp knife and it takes forever to do these pieces. You mount them, cut them out, just follow the lines and cut them out and then you apply a cover layer over the top of them and it creates this kind of uh, recessed groove effect. So it's kind of a nice 3D effect on the balance. And then the next image we have with the roof in place. And there will be parts of the instructions that say the score rather than cut, so you can fold the card to the angles you want it to be. And the instructions are step by step, so you just follow them through and it will slowly take shape. You can do different things with the model. You can have your doors down at both ends, you can have them up at both ends. You can customize it however you want. And the way they do that is you mount and print off your doors, and then you can either cut them short if you want them. So they're at the top of the model, so it shows with the doors open at one end, or you can have them hold and mount them so it looks like the doors are closed. You can do that either way, depending on how you like to have them. The, uh, the buttresses in between that hold the structure together, they use a base layer. So you mount your base layer onto your card, and then you print off your cover layer, and then you wrap your cover layer around to make your buttress. So the best way I've found to do this is to print and mount all your pieces, and then gather them together where your pieces need to be and then assemble your model with your pieces ready to go. So you have your buttresses, you have your walls, you have your windows, all in place before you actually assemble the model together. You also have, uh, you also have a, a cover sheet that has different labels. So if you want to put road numbers on, if you want to put signage on, you can do all that. You also have a section where you can modify the file before you print it to change the name of the depot. So it has a field in the PDF that you can put your own name in there and then put your own depot name on there and then print that off and put that in. So I've, I've actually called this for my layout Bluegrass Junction and I've put that on the label in there. And also things like warning signs, you can apply them and again just apply them with a, a little dab of glue. The PVA glue or glue stick works well for those. Uh, this kit also comes with a hard stand roadbed that you can put on your track itself and then the model sits on top of that. I haven't built that with this yet because I have got a final place for the depot to go. But eventually I will build the hard stand that comes with it go on the track. So that's the card kits. Uh, the first kit I did was the free kit and the second kit I did was the engine shed and I'll talk about the, what I learned from both of those in a moment. But I'll go into the, the ready to assemble kits and the one I use is Metcalf. They're a fantastic company to use. There is another company called Superquick. Their models are nice too, but Metcalf is just way above Superquick as far as the quality of the models. Uh, they're fantastic as far as Metcalf is concerned. Now these guys are ready to assemble kits, so you don't have to print anything off. They, they come with everything you need in the kit. You just have to score in some of the tabs to pull the pieces out, mount your windows and assemble and glue everything together. The kit I have on the table here in the middle, this is a Metcalf kit. This is the cinema movie theater that they do. And it went together far quicker than the downloaded print kits. I, I actually built this kit together in an hour. It went, it went through that quick. And what you get with these, they basically come in a package like this, a nice flat package. And you just cut out, most of it will, will push out push out the pieces. There will be a few places you'll need to cut, but for the most part, they push out. 
So you get the various kit pieces and you'll get an instruction sheet. So again, you just follow the instruction sheet. It will take you through step by step how to make the model. And again, read through the instruction kit a couple of times to familiarize yourself with the pieces and where they go. Product I recommend getting for doing this is a product called Rocket Card Glue. Again, you can get this on Amazon. It is one of the best glues I've found for doing card kits. I use this on the, the cinema kit and I've started using it on the card kits as well. It's fantastic for it. It sets real fast and it's good for assembly. I wouldn't use it on mounting your card to the base layers, but on assembling your finished pieces into the model itself. The rocket card glue is absolutely fantastic. And the little goes a long way, it's very thin. It actually comes with a small fine tipped applicator so that you can make very, very fine dabs of glue. And it does go a long way. It's very strong and it bonds almost instantly. You just hold the model in place, 30 seconds, and it's, it's tacked on there. And you can move on. I wouldn't build too much together at the same time. I say, I built this model together in an hour and it went together fairly well and it was held up and then I just let it sit overnight. So you can build an entire model fairly quickly with the rocket car. And it's reasonably priced and you can get it on Amazon. And here's some of the push-out parts that you get. It comes with even the, the window glazing, so you can put windows in and all the, the different elements to build the model. There's instruction sheets on there, how to put it together step by step, just follow the steps. But read ahead as well, so that as you're building it, get familiar with where everything goes further up. And there's an image of the model that I have on the table. So some tips, as I say, read the instructions. Um, definitely worthwhile several times. It does help avoid mistakes. I did make one mistake with the cinema kit where I put the, the, the blue sign on the front here, I actually put it at the wrong angle. And I realized when I added the, the top balance around it, it's like, oh, it's meant to be straight, not leaned in. And then I corrected that once I realized. But other than that, if I'd read it further on the instructions and looked at the pictures, I would have seen it was how it was meant to go. Take your time, you don't need to rush it. Uh, make multiple passes with the knife. So this is where the steel ruler comes in handy. You place it on your cut line and then make several score lines with the knife. You just make several light passes and it will cut through eventually. It'll get a better cut and you won't get so much tear. Out. So just make multiple light passes with the knife and make sure the blades are sharp and have spares. You will, you will go through it. And then let the glue dry before cutting it. So on the pieces that you mount to your card, you cut out your shapes as a rough card, mount them on your card, and let the glue set overnight before you start the cut. I found if I was too quick at trying to cut out the base layers, I was tearing the, the glue up. So you need to let it set before you cut your base layers out. Now, one thing that scale scenes have is I'll go back to it. They have a help section. Now, let's see. Uh, All the kits they suggest printing at 100%, and they're designed for A4 paper. 
which is a UK variant. Here you have a slightly different size paper, but it will work. When you print your image in your print dialog, you will need to move the page slightly up so that you cut off scale scenes label. And all it does is cut off their label, but the model itself will be intact. Or you can use legal size paper. Legal size paper, you'd end up with wastage of paper, but you would get the whole page printed off. They also do, you can go to this section here, what will my colors be like on my printer? And you can print off a test sheet. So right here is the test sheet. Yeah. So you can print off the test sheet and then it'll show you what the colors will look like based on your printer and you can compare that with what you see on the screen. So it gives you an idea of what they're going to look like when you print it off of the printer. They also have a scratch builders section. So you can buy various texture sheets. So if you like to scratch build your own buildings, you can just buy different textures. So you can get brick textures, different roof flashings, different door textures, and you can just do this. You can download the different textures and then print them off as many times as you want and use that in your scratch buildings. You can make your own building and then just use the textures to cover those buildings with whatever effects you want. So that's really useful for those that like to build their own buildings to sort of sizes. And these are quite reasonable. And again, like the models, once you own the file, you can print it off as many times as you want and use those images. Uh, there is also... Three DK had resize. So you can resize your kits if you need to. So if you like the look of a double O gauge model, a HO gauge model, and you want to resize it, for instance, they have a lot more of the double O than the HO, and they also have a lot more of those compared to N scale. So they have this chart on here. And all you need to do is take the original scale of the model and then you apply that using a formula to the scale that you want it to be and then you change in your printer settings you reduce or enlarge your image so for HO you would reduce it so from 176 to 187 one went down and then you can print at that percentage. And that should take care of that to print it at an actual accurate scale. So it goes through the steps on how to do that with your printer on this website. So you can go through and work out how you need to scale. So it does have it quite handy here. So if you want to go from double O to HO, you just reduce it by 87%. And the same if you want to increase it. So if you want to go from double O to O scale, you enlarge by 176%. You're going to need much bigger paper for that, or you can move the image in your printer dialog and print multiple different pages and then work it out that way. But you can enlarge or reduce the image to get an accurate scale. But anything that if you buy it in HO scale, you just print at 100%. If you buy a double O gauge, you can print that out 100% if you want the same double. Scale Seeds does have a section somewhere on their website where you can, they have a very basic version.
So they have various common questions that you can go through. So here's the most common sizes on here that you can use. So if you want to uh, print double O scale in N scale, you can reduce an N, N scale on their website by 93% and that will get you an international N scale. UK N scale is again slightly different to US N scale, but only slightly different. It runs on the same track, but the scale of the the model is going to be slightly different. And this goes into the percentages you need to change your printer settings to print those on. So you can go as big as O scale, you can go down to TT, S scale, Z scale, T scale, and it gives you recommendations on how to change, on what percentage to change your printer. So you can print at those scales. Some other recommendations. Um, right now, all of the models I've built, I've used plain paper as my cover layers. You can use um, full size address labels and print directly on those. It would save you having to glue and wrap those cover layers. I have tried printing directly onto cardstock for some of the layers. The only layers that use the cardstock, however, are usually the cover layers, so you don't really need to count them anyway. But there are some elements that say to use light card, and you can print those on directly onto cardstock. I have found the colors come out slightly different when printing on the cardstock, mainly because the, the color of the cardstock is slightly different from the paper stock, but that is one option you can do. I've seen people online that have used a pry cut cutter and imported it and changed the file around so that they can have the cutter cut out the files for you, make life a little bit easier with that. I haven't again played with that. I don't have a pry cut cutter, but that is one option you can do. One thing I've found is with the finish afterwards using the uh, yeah the, the spray varnish afterwards I have done it both ways where I've done it after I've completed the model and I've done it on the pages before I've cut them out and before I've glued them onto my base card. So what I do now, and it works out better results, is I will spray the printed pages and just spray them with some light passes of the varnish, let them dry completely, and then start gluing. If I sprayed it after gluing, it soaks through and ruins the glue. And the, the first model that I have here, that kind of shows that where it's starting to separate where I don't uh, I think that's about it. Any questions? <laughs>